Hello, Onshape is a computer-aided design program or CAD program that has no limitations as far as what you can do with it. For example, you can even make different parts and assign motion to them so that you can make fully functioning machines with this uh, program. And it also has um, the ability to do machining afterwards. So there's really nothing that you can't do with this program and its add-ons. And it's a free cloud-based software. So hopefully in our exploration so far, you gained some comfort with viewing, moving, and rotating 3D objects. I'm going to show a quick clip here that gets you to understand the mouse controls. You will want a three button roller mouse for this. Here's what you need to know to get started. The first thing, how to rotate, pan, and zoom. To rotate, hold down the right mouse button and drag. To pan, hold down control plus the right mouse button and drag. If your mouse has a middle wheel, holding it down and dragging can also be used to pan. To zoom, simply scroll in and out. The next difference to point out all right, that's enough of that. To on shape, I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to title it Geometry Explorations. And this is going to be an example of most of the elements that you need to put in your, um, in your assignment. Um, so one of the big differences between this CAD program and say Tinkercad is that you are not able to make three-dimensional objects right off the bat. What you are going to do instead is make a two-dimensional drawing on a specific plane and then these two-dimensional drawings can be turned into three-dimensional objects by using 3D features such as extrude, which is what I'm doing right now. So again, you cannot start with three-dimensional objects. Rather, you will start with a sketch, a two-dimensional sketch. So if you want to make a sketch, you can click on here and it'll say, hey, where do you want to draw? Now that I have a three-dimensional object, I can actually sketch on this plane if I want to. Or I could keep working on that uh, surface that I had started with. But no, I don't want to make a new drawing. I'm going to go back to my original drawing, which currently, there we go. Now, if you left click or control click on your workspace, you will get this option to view normal to sketch plane. That's when you're looking straight on at this sketch. And that's the best way to work when you're drawing. I'm going to show you how to do a midpoint. Over here, we have lots of features. Um, coincident means put these two objects in the same spot. Concentric, center the circles on the same spot. When you hover over these, it's going to tell you what it does and give you a couple steps for how to make that operation occur. But I'm going to grab midpoint. So now I see that midpoint is there. I'm going to draw a line from here. And notice that if I get close to the actual midpoint of this line, this little um, thing right here, uh, it goes away when I move, that little image pops up that's the midpoint image. It means if I click right now, it is going to put it on the midpoint. So that, and I press escape to get out a line draw tool. This point right here is at the midpoint, but I also want this point to be at the midpoint. So I'm going to click on the midpoint tool click the line and the dot and voila it's going to take that top dot to the midpoint as well this is important for centering i'm going to turn this into a construction line which means it's not going to actually turn into 3d objects it doesn't really matter whether you do that or not i am now going to put this construction line directly on the center of my plane just because um, by using the coincident tool i'm going to say i want this line and this line to be coincident. I just do that because I like the way it looks to be centered on there. Okay. So now I'm going to make a um, ellipse right here. 
Um, that isn't exactly where I want it. And since I do not have a mouse attached to my computer right now, I cannot move it with the mouse. Um, and so, oops, it's still, okay, I press enter. And now I have defined that little ellipse out of there um, and so what I'm going to do to move this object is I'm going to use the dimension tool I'm going to click on dimension and then click the dot and this line and then I can assign a value for that distance and I'm going to make it one inch away and see what that looks like okay that's all right I'm just going to make this circle a little smaller or the ellipse a little smaller just doing it in one direction And then I'm also going to oh, it's not grabbing it. Escape. No, oh, I have dimension. Okay. Boink. And I'm gonna make that 1.4. I'm just trying to bring this shape down to where I want it. I like it right there. Okay, so I can see. Alright. So I'm going to click get out of a dimension tool so I don't have to see that stuff again. All right, there it is. Never mind, it won't listen to me. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to rotate in a sketch. I'm sorry, mirror. We're going to mirror this guy. Um, let me find it. The last thing I look at. Oh, here it's going to be right here. All right, so all kinds of cool features here, but I'm looking for mirror. When you mirror something, you must select the object that you want to mirror, which I already had selected, and select a line on which to mirror it. And notice that it's telling me what to do in the little light blue box. So I just mirrored this shape across the center line, giving myself two eyeballs on this um, rectangle. All right, so, so far this is my sketch. I had already previously extruded it, so now, you know, whatever changes I make to the sketch are reflected in the extrusion. I'm going to unhide my sketch so I can see it and go back to drawing some more. Look at it straight on. Okay. So now I am going to make a little mouth for this dude. It's over on the side there. Um, give it a little curvy edge. And give it what's called a fillet. All right. I'm done with this guy so far. Um, and so all of these features can be done also in three dimensions. I just filleted that sketch, but now in three dimensions, I can also fill it and smooth that guy out. Oh, I guess I had the eyeball selected. Didn't work. See this red over here says that did not work. All right, I'm going to go through and <sighs> okay. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to select the whole freaking sketch face because it's just going to be easier for me to show you the freaking build. All right, there we go. He's all filleted. Um, it just would have taken me a while to select the faces I wanted. And so there we go. That's what I got so far. 
All right, so looking at this guy from the front, he's a little freaky looking. All right, almost done here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is view this guy from this right plane. The right plane happens to go right in the middle of my face. And I'm going to do a sketch on here on that right plane and now I'm going to view normal to that sketch plane. Now on this sketch I'm going to make a right triangle. At least I'm going to try. Okay, I'm going to grab this guy and that guy and come up to my tools and say Please make those perpendicular. Now I have my right triangle. I'm going to take this line and the surface of my object and I'm going to make them... Nah, that wasn't the surface of the object. Let me look at it a little bit from the side, which I cannot do easily because I do not have my mouse. I can make those coincident, I believe. Yes, just made that line of that sketch um, on the same surface as that plane. Okay, so back to my right view. Okay, and I'm going to look at it from the front, make sure it's positioned where I want it, right in the middle because I put it on that plane. Okay, now here gets, here's where it's going to get funny. All right, I'm going to grab this surface. Oh, wait, I'm done with the sketch. It's all good. Grab that triangle, and I'm going to do a revolve. Whenever you revolve, you have to pick the shape and then also the axis upon which to revolve. And so I just made a cone there, which I am, by taking that triangle and revolving it around. Um, so that's a revolution. And we did a reflection, but I'm going to show you another ref how to reflect in 3D. We also have a mirror option in 3D. I'm going to mirror my entire face about this plane. I'm going to select the mirror plane. It's going to be this right there. And check it out. I don't know. I got a doobly face. Um, and so you can fool around with your axis on which to mirror it. Um, but you can also do this with three-dimensional objects. Last thing I'm going to do here is show you how to make a sphere. Um, so to make a sphere, I'm going to select a plane and sketch. Um, I'm going to make a little circle, a perfect circle. You can fiddle around with this, but I don't want to fiddle around. I'm going to make this um, escape out of the circle tool. I'm going to make this... A sphere really quick and easy by making it a two inch radius and that's great and I'm going to extrude this um, two inches also so pretty much I have a like a cubic cylinder you know it's the circle and the height the diameter and the height are the same and now I'm going to fill it this bad boy by grabbing both of these uh, circles on the end cruise on over to that fillet tool and I'm going to define the fillet at one inch, which is going to make this a perfect circle. All right. Um, so I've shown you all of the elements that you would need to make a prism. Technically, this is a prism or, you know, any shape that you extrude is a prism. Um, how to make a cone by revolution. You can make a cylinder by revolving a rectangle or extruding a circle. Um, and then I'm going to leave it to you to figure out how to make a pyramid, but ask me if you're struggling with that because I got some ideas.